Okay, Steve, the, the Word of God is alive and powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword, <clears throat> piercing, dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly, rightly dividing, dividing the word, word of truth. truth. We always say that the spiritual, spiritual spin stops right, right here because we really we care, care for you. you. Pray for us, Steve. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to study your word. So we ask your blessings upon the content here tonight that will become real in our lives. We'll practice it and put it to work in the marketplace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. And I, I'm not going to call all the names that I see it out here, but I do want to I want to welcome Christy Booth. She was my one of my ATA instructors. She's down, I think she's down in Florida. Thank you for logging on, Christy. <laughs> okay, uh, folks, let's do this. Let's turn to our Bible study now. And uh, Steve, we're talking about suffering. And I'll tell you, I want, I want all of our folks to listen carefully because there's not a time in life when people will not be subject to suffering. The question is, why are you suffering? Right now, down on the, down on the Florida coast, with all that red uh, stuff that's coming in uh, from, from the ocean, uh, it's it's hurting people down there. Uh, we got the forest fires still out in California. We got things going on all over the all over the country. Yeah. You've got health problems. You've got financial problems. You got work problems. You got yeah, um, acquaintance problems and that kind of stuff. Uh, and there, there's these are forms of suffering. So what we want to do is want to try to understand something about what's going on. Now this is the third hour. And the third one hour and 15 minute program mm -hmm. that we've done on this, we've already finished two and a half hours and we're going to begin part three tonight. So, Steve, if you will, uh, reviewing part one, that was two weeks ago. And what we did is we talked about the causes for suffering in life. Mm -hmm. And so let's talk about those uh, those um those uh, causes, those causes for suffering, and list eight all all those eight that we have studied so far. Okay. Okay. Number one, general causes. That's right. Suffering caused by other people. Right. Privation, suffering, suffering from legitimate or illegitimate Ill administration of the law, mm -hmm. social suffering, mental suffering from sins, neurosis or psychosis, uh, suffering because authority is rejected. And suffering associated with reversionism. Now, here's the issue. You just read eight, eight causes for suffering in life. And that has to be more than just, just a Bible study. You reading something. What we need to do is stop and take a look at our lives and ask ourselves, are we suffering? And if we are suffering, then why are we suffering? Well, here's some general causes and just causes in general. So it, you just named eight of them. Mm -hmm. And I would hope that when they, when they heard those, they might say, oh, no, I see uh, suffering because of other people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what, what, how were you hurt by somebody else? Did they lie? Did they abuse you? Did they frustrate you? Did they uh, injure you physically? What happened? Uh, privation suffering. Listen, we got people all over the world that's suffering because they don't have food. They don't have water. How about suffering for legitimate and illegitimate administration of the law? Well, uh, illegitimate uh, administration of the law. Okay, so you get accused of something you really didn't do. How about this? You break the law, you, you, you get a fine, you go to jail, you go to prison. What? See, that's suffering. Social suffering uh, out here in life for whatever's going on. Mental suffering from sins. We just talked about eight causes for suffering. But now as we moved into the second uh, second area, we gave the causes of the causes of suffering in life. But now let's talk about two basic categories of suffering for an unbeliever. Now, an unbeliever is someone who has never trusted Jesus Christ to be their savior. Hold it now, just now. We're not talking about whether you go to church. We're not talking about whether you go to Sunday school. We're not talking about whether you pray. We're not talking about whether you give money to somebody. We're not talking about how wonderful you are in life and helping everybody. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is, is how does a person get saved, Steve? Faith alone in Christ alone. 
faith alone in Christ alone, faith. okay? So what that means is you're going to believe in the one who died, was buried, and resurrected, and resurrected for your for your, salvation. For your salvation. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter, do you have to do anything more than that? No. No, that's what salvation is. Mm -hmm. It's believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you've been saved. So all this idea out here of adding baptism, adding tithing, adding uh, being good, uh, confessing your sins, beating yourself to death because you did something, hold it, none of that is going to save anybody. But once you get saved, once you become a born-again Christian, is that the end of the Christian journey? Absolutely not. It's just <laughs> the start of it. That's the start <laughs> of the Christian journey. Now, let me ask this, Steve. Let's suppose a person truly gets saved, and they don't ever live for Christ. Are they going to heaven when they die? Sure, whether they like it or not. <laughs> okay, and what do they lose? They lose blessing in time and rewards in eternity. You want to be miserable all your life? Mm -hmm. Just don't serve Christ. Just don't be obedient to the Lord. You're going to heaven. But the truth of the matter is, if you break the rules, if you break the guidelines set down by God, there will be discipline in your life. Self-induced misery, warning discipline. What's the next one? Intensive. Intensified misery and what? Sin and the death. sin of death. That's premature death Before. of the ambassador for Christ. Now, basic categories of unbeliever. Forget, we're not talking about the believer now. We're talking only about the unbeliever. So what are the two, what are the two categories? Two categories of suffering for the unbeliever or suffering in time and suffering throughout eternity. Okay, so there are two categories of suffering. The, the unbeliever doesn't, he never gets never gets born again, never gets saved. Could be male or female, black, white, rich, poor, makes no difference. If you've never been born again, if you die before you ever become born again, you're going to not only have you suffered in time because of all the circumstances where God's trying to get your attention, mm -hmm. you're also going to suffer throughout all of eternity because you're going to be banished to the lake of fire, which is eternal separation from God. I don't know anybody that would want that. Mm. Not if they're in the right mind. Mm. So the truth of the matter is, tonight is the day. Today is the day. Mm. It's your appointed time to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and turn this whole thing around. You don't have to tell me. You don't have to make a public display. You don't have to write somebody a letter. You don't have to pray through. You don't have to go to go to confession. Nothing. You just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Bingo. You're saved. Once it stuck in my mind one time, you put it like this, in the privacy of your own mind. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yeah. It's not... You may, because of something, at, because an after effect of what you've done, you may be baptized. But that doesn't have anything to do with saving you. It's something you do as a result of what has already happened. And you don't even have to you tell have anybody. To, exactly. exactly. See, that, whether there's a whole, I mean, there's so much to understand about this. Okay, so the unbeliever is mm -hmm. going to suffer in time. Mm -hmm. In eternity. And suffer in eternity. That's mm -hmm. two categories. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about reviewing last week. Okay. Because what we did there is we wanted to talk, Ben, about suffering in eternity mm -hmm. for the believer. Mm -hmm. And see, we looked at a passage of Scripture and said, oh, wait a minute, just a second. I didn't know the believer was going to suffer in eternity. <laughs> well, what we, know, what, we, what we mean by that is, is from the, time you're, from the time you die, you're going to be in heaven awaiting the Bema Seat judgment. And at that judgment, hey, you know, you're, I can just imagine this. Oh, you're, you're doing what you're doing in heaven awaiting the Bema Seat, waiting for the waiting for the uh, for the rapture of the church and oh the appointed time has come the rapture occurs here's everybody up there you have you now have your resurrection body Jesus is getting ready to call you one at a time to come to the bema seat and you look up and you say uh well it's been, it's been pretty cool so far but you have your one on one with Jesus and we saw that passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 11 through 15 and we saw that when God, when Jesus throws your good, your good works as a believer into the fire, the testing fire, we find then that what's going to happen is, is that the divinely good works that you did will come out and you'll be rewarded. But the, but the human good works that you do will be burned up. And what do you do? What happens when you suffer, you loss. suffer loss? What that means is you recognize the fact that you blew it, not your salvation, but you blew the opportunities to serve God, to serve Christ in this time and doing the right thing in the right way. So suffering in eternity, yes, at the Bema seat. But at the end of human history, we saw an entirely different, uh, an entirely different subject. So what is that point for there? All suffering ceases for all believers in the new heaven and the new earth. And the new heaven and the new earth are created by God after the end of human history. 
Now, with that in mind, the believer then is going to suffer in eternity only at the Bema seat, and that's with the resurrection body, mm -hmm. okay? But after that's all over, you're going to come back on planet Earth and reign with Christ for a thousand years and then go off out into eternity future, okay? Now, the point C there was what? The biblical reason for Christian suffering. Okay, so last week we talked about the reason, the biblical reason for suffering. That's in last week's notes. This is review. We're not going to go back through that again. But tonight we start with the categories of Christian suffering. So not only do you have categories of suffering for the for the unbeliever in time and in eternity, we're going to talk about the categories of suffering for born again Christian. So if you're a born again Christian here on WebEx, here out there on on Facebook or on YouTube, listen to this: categories of Christian suffering. Point number one: disciplinary suffering. That's the kind of suffering that it comes to you for doing the wrong, wrong thing. thing. Doing the wrong thing? Teaching getter. Absolutely. When you do the wrong thing, when you fail to be obedient to the commands mm -hmm. of God, they're, they're listed in the Bible. That's why it's imperative that we come to Bible study, come to Bible study, come to Bible study. And listen, we ought to be studying the Bible seven days a week. Seven days a week. Now, what, now wait just a second. Now, I don't have time. Well, hang on now. You don't have time for it? You better make time because time is short. Even if you live for 100 years, Steve, mm. that's just a blip on the screen oh, in, terms, in terms of eternity. And once, you, once we get off out into eternity, we don't change anything. We are what we are at that point in time. You're either going to glorify God a little, a little, none, a little bit, or a whole lot, depending on how you live between the time you're born again until the time you die. So disciplinary suffering. Let's talk about that for just a minute. What's sub point eight there? Suffering from divine discipline. Okay, so disciplinary suffering is suffering from divine right. discipline. We actually read a passage of scripture, mm -hmm. and that is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6. And Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6 is speaking of what kind of... What kind of a believer? A born again believer. Yeah, a born again believer. What's his What's his spiritual it, condition? It's in carnality. The incarnality. Yeah. And what does What is a carnal believer? Steve, you're functioning from your old sin nature, your old okay. man. Oh, that's ex so. Old you're woman. functioning from the old man or the old woman. You're in what sphere of living? You're, you're in the carnal sin, uh, old sin. Uh, yeah. Sphere of the flesh. We call there, it. Yeah. So you're flesh, functioning huh? in the sphere of the flesh. Outside of God's plan for your life. You're manifesting that through the old man or the old woman. Mm -hmm. And you're committing personal sins. Mm -hmm. So you're a carnal believer. You're, be you're a believer. You're going to go to heaven. You're going to heaven, but you're going to suffer in time, time. and you're going to suffer yeah. in eternity until so, after mm -hmm. after the Bema seat. Mm -hmm. So there's a passage of scripture mm -hmm. here that's going to tell us this. So here's what I want you to read do. I want you to read the, okay. read the bold, and then we're going to come back. I'm going to ask you who these are. Okay, okay. go ahead. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens, disciplines. And disciplines to the maximum. He skins alive with a whip every son whom he receives. Now, let me point Hallelujah. out something. In this passage, it says, for you see. In other words, he's talking to believers here. Mm -hmm. If you're born again, he's talking to you. Mm -hmm. And he says, for you see. And what is this that he, what is it he's trying to get us to see? For, for He wants us to see that whom the Lord what? Loveth. Loves. The, whom the Lord loves. Now, Steve, we need to be careful here. Because... Uninformed believers, uninformed unbelievers, see that word love, and all they think is this kind of stuff. Oh, Put your arm yeah, around, tell you five yeah, nice yeah. things about yourself. No, there are two different categories of love mm -hmm. in the Bible. One is phileo, no. the other is agapao, or agape and philos. That's, that's the nouns and the verbs. This word, the word here for love, is actually the word agapao, or the noun is agape. But what is agape or agape love? What is that? It's a mental attitude love. It's a mental attitude love. Now, what we need to realize is this. The phileo love is when I put my arm around you, tell you five nice things about yourself, mm -hmm. pat you on the back, and what a wonderful person you are. That's friendship love, okay? Mm -hmm. But this is not friendship love. We call that rapport and compatibility. With That's that, exactly yeah. right. It's, phileo love is rapport and compatibility. This is the kind of, this is the kind of love that a husband has for a wife, a wife has for a husband, mm -hmm. a boyfriend, girlfriend yeah. have for each other. This is the sure. kind of this is the kind of uh, love that you have for your friends out there. Deeper love. That's phileo. 
Now, the deeper love is agapao. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, now, here's what happens, though. It's with, agapa, with agapao love or agape love, this is a mental attitude love. And what that does is that allow, that's allowing you. It's respecting your freedom to pursue your oh, own internalized goal. What do you want to do? Agape love says, hey, have at it. If that's what you want, have at it. You have two choices. Do God's will or your will. God's will or the way you want to do it. But if you do God's will, you're going to be blessed. If you don't, you, if you don't uh, do God's will, guess what? He loves you. The Lord loves you. He's re What's that mean? He is respecting your freedom to go out there and make a mess out of your life. Because the larger picture in which we're living is the AC, angelic the conflict. angelic conflict. And who's in the angelic conflict? Every human being. Every human being. So if you're with us tonight, not with us tonight, if you're a human being, <laughs> you are in the angelic conflict. It is a spiritual battle. You can't get out. And we were, we were in Zaxby's the other night, the other day at lunchtime, and there's a, there's a, a picture on the wall, and it's Uncle Sam, and he's got that finger pointed at you like that. And, and you if you remember, those pictures, 1940, I can uh -huh. see it. like Oh, yeah. goodness gracious. Uncle Sam Someone needs wants, you. Yeah. And, that, and that he wants you. And what he was doing, he needs you in the military to fight the wars, okay? Up at Zaxby's, it's Uncle Sam needs you to eat some, eat some chicken. OK, is what is what it amounted to. But I saw but that, that picture of Uncle Sam wanting you. Well, look here. What happens, this agapao love here is a mental attitude love. And it's just respecting whether you do the right thing or the wrong thing. God is respecting you to mess up your life or to or to honor him, glorify him through all that you do. So for for whom the Lord loves, what does he do? Agapao loves. Mental yeah, attitude, that's about, mental attitude loves. Okay, but and what's he, and it? He chastens or okay, disciplines. Yeah. He chastens, and that word chastens means he disciplines. Now hold it right now. After this, after this phrase, chastens and disciplines, that's what he does to people he loves. See, in other words, here it is. You you take you take the choice, good or bad. If you make the wrong choice, he's going to chasten, he will discipline you. What you need to realize is. These next phrases don't mean punishment. This is not punishment. God is giving, he's putting pressure in your life. And when he says here, he disciplines to the maximum, what that means is, and then it says skins alive with a whip. Th this, isn't, this isn't beating you that way. This is not punishment. It's the intensity of the attention, attention getter that's coming to your life to indicate to you that you are on the wrong path, okay? So because he loves you, he's going to chasten you. He's going to discipline you. Why? For what? For the C word? Uh, uh, for because of your incarnality. That's right. Because, you're, you're because you yeah, are a carnal it. believer, he's, he's going to discipline you. And the idea is to get you back in to the right place. Right. Now, the, he's not forcing you. You have a choice. Mm -hmm. You can die. You can die believing what you want to. But that is a form of divine discipline in your life also. So he, he chastens and he disciplines. He's disciplining to the maximum. He skins alive with a whip. And why is he doing that? Because of your what? Your reversionism. Your reversionism. And reversionism is a move away the, from, from the plan of God. So what happens is that means you're going in the wrong direction. You're not going toward God's direction. You're going towards Satan's direction. That's his plan for your life, okay? And who's he going to do this? He he skins alive. He disciplines every what? Son. Every, every son whom, he, whom receives. he receives. So you are a son of God. Male, female, black, white. You are said to be a son of God. You are a child of God because you're a born-again believer. Mm -hmm. Now, because you are, just understand this. For whom the Lord loves... Mm -hmm. He will discipline for your carnality. And he's going to discipline to the maximum your life if you happen to be going in the wrong direction continually. Okay? Now, that's so what we see. The categories of Christian suffering is, number one is what? Disciplinary suffering. And he's going to... Suffering for divine discipline. Okay. And we've seen that. Now, let's go to the next page, see? This is a this is a prayer. Well, this is Psalm 38, man. I'll tell you what, this is absolutely something. We're gonna read this one line at a time. 
one, really one verse at a time, okay? And I want you to read this. And I'd like for I'd like for our listening audience, when they're hearing you read this, mm -hmm. what I'd like for them to do, so read it with clarity and don't, we're not rush through it, but I want you to listen to what this is saying because this is a Psalm of David mm -hmm. that he will use to cause himself to remember why he is suffering. David is, at this point in time, he's writing a psalm about his sufferings in life. Mm. Now, this guy was an adulterer. He, he, was, um, he committed adultery. Um, he, uh, oh, had, he had sexual relationship with, an, with, a, with another, another woman. And had her husband and, murdered. And had, and had her husband murdered. That's right. I mean, but hey, this guy is going to be made king one day. So what we see here, and I want you to understand this, no matter how you have messed up your life, you better listen. No matter how you have messed up your life, it doesn't make a difference what other people think about you. What you want to know is what does God have to say about this? What is God thinking about you? So David is going to give us some insight here about what it was like in his life while he was suffering in reversionism. Whoa. He was going away from God and he's going to he's going to give us any, some insight into what was going on in his life. Verse 1, Steve. Oh Lord, don't punish me in your anger. Stop right there. Don't punish me in your anger. Hold it right now. I have a question to ask people. Do you really believe that God is angry? Uh let me ask let me see. Is that an attribute of God? Mm -hmm. So sovereignty, E-L, eternal, eternal life, life L, uh, love, love, justice, justice absolute righteousness, righteousness, omnipotence, omniscience, omnipresence, immutability, and veracity. veracity. Did anybody hear anger in, hear there? in there? No. no, you see, this is why when you study the Word of God, you need to make a distinction between, uh, between something that's literal God is not literally angry. What happens is this is an anthropopathism, an anthropopathism. And an anthropopath, that word anger, is an anthropopathism which simply means it's attributing a human attribute to God. Does, do, do people get angry? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So yes. how are we going to understand what God's doing to us if we don't have some way of understanding it? Mm -hmm. So here's the issue. Right, the righteousness of God always demands what? Justice. No. Uh, oh, his righteousness demands righteousness. Righteousness demands righteousness, justice. and justice, justice demands, demands justice. justice. And what the righteousness, righteousness of God demands, demands, the justice of God right. will execute. Right. So the righteousness of God looks down at you and says, hey, good demand. decision down there. Justice is going to do what? Bless you. Yeah, okay. God looks down and says, hey, oh, that's a bad decision down there. That doesn't match my righteousness. Justice, do your thing. And what's justice do? He uh, disciplines. Discipline you. Cursing comes to your life. So what happens is anger here is not literal anger. Mm -hmm. This is actually the righteousness of God evaluating your every decision in life. Mm -hmm. And if it's good, you get blessed by justice. Justice will always do the right thing in the right mm -hmm. way. And so when you make the right decision, you get blessed. When you do the wrong thing, justice will curse you. That's the anger. Mm. God isn't angry. That's oh, simply him getting your attention mm. that you're doing something wrong. This is one of those things you say, if we just could get this one thing, we could just go home. Just I go mean, home. If you could realize that in your life, yeah. it would be a major turning point in your spirituality. No, no doubt. Absolutely. You can't beat the system. You cannot beat God's no. system. No. That, see, his, his right, his integrity. And you know, Steve, when God is, when God is accepting your decisions mm -hmm. as good and blessing you, when he's accepting your decisions as wrong and cursing you, all along, it's the it's the agape, the uh, uh, the love word that comes in. He loves you when he's blessing you. He loves you when he's cursing you. This is not friendship love. This is a mental attitude where he's respecting your decision to do whatever you want to do. Okay, point mm. uh, verse two. 
You have wounded me with your arrows. You have struck me down. Now, and this is so what happened now, and these are not the arrows. What happens is when you get out of fellowship with God, boy, you, God gives you a zinger, okay? And, <laughs> and that zinger, that arrow is a circumstance of life mm -hmm. where you are getting the divine discipline. It, it is the disciplinary action that comes to you. It's the thing that's causing you to mm -hmm. suffer in life, okay? It hurts. So you have wounded. See, he's gotten to the point here where he's, he's been wounded. You have wounded me with your arrows. You have struck me down. Okay, verse mm. 3. Because of your anger, I am in great pain. My See, whole body is diseased because of my sins. Now, what happened here? It, it, because of your anger, God... See. This is, a, this is an anthropopathism. Mm -hmm. what, what that indicates is David is realizing just how severe this is. I mean, he is suffering. He is suffering under the justice of God because the righteousness of God has, accept, has not accepted the things that he's done in the past, okay? Now, he says, because of your anger, I am in great pain. He said, my whole body is diseased because of my sins. In other words, this it's, he's sick as a result of this. Mm -hmm. It's caused him illness, okay? In verse 4, I am drowning in my sins. They are a burden too now, heavy now, to bear. Now come back and read that whole thing. There, I am drowning in the flood of my sins. Yes. They are a burden too heavy to bear. I mean, this was a flood. He didn't so, just he just wow. didn't sin one time yeah. out here, one one time. Not it, sprinkling it's a, on it's a flood of stuff, you mm -hmm. know. It's the mental, the verbal, the the uh, the overt actions in his life. So he's drowning in a flood of sins. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what happens if you will stop and take a look at your life now? How old are you? Uh, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80. What, how old are you? But when you look back. And you see everything that you have done wrong. There you are. You've got that flood of sin. You're drowning in it, okay? And by the way, he was a believer at this point in time. Mm -hmm. He is a believer. And he's drowning in his flood of sins. What he's doing, he's reflecting on what's going on. Now, remember, this is a psalm that's causing him to remember because there's going to be there's going to be an upside mm -hmm. as we move down the list okay mm -hmm. so he's drowning in a flood of sins what's he say now because i have been foolish my sores stink and rot yeah. see that so whatever's whatever's going that's on the uh, extremity uh, in, of it. In, uh, oh. yes I mean, it's so bad. Extreme. You know, someone might someone might think here uh, something like this. You know, your sores your sores stink. Uh, infections. These, these were infections on the bodies. So what was going on with him? All we know is his man. He said, "I've been so foolish," and he says, "My sores stink and rot." Uh, I'm just stopping to say, look, take a look at your life. Take a look at your life. Maybe you're going to understand what's going on in your life. Okay, going on. I am bent over. I am crushed. I mourn all day long. See, I mean, can you can you begin to see? Just go back to verse one and just read down through and just see the condition of this guy's life at this point in time. In verse in verse seven, I am burning with fever. I'm near death. You hear that? I mean, this is this is not just foolishness. He's not just after throwing out words. Yeah. This he's describing his life. At this time, okay? And wow. again, this is a believer. Go yeah. ahead. I am worn out and utterly crushed. My heart is troubled and I groan with pain. He's, I mean, he's 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 hurting. He's realizing how, how he's caught himself foolish up here. He realized how bad he's been, uh, what he's done wrong. Verse 9. Oh, Lord, you know what I long for. You hear all my groans. See, now here again, now he's he's looking up to God and he said, you know, I, uh, you know what I long for. But what, what's he mean here? What happens is David has a desire to do the right thing, mm -hmm. but he's not been doing it. Mm -hmm. He says, God, you know what, you know what I long for. I want to do the right thing. And he says, you're hearing my groans. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm cutting loose here. I, mm -hmm. You know what I'm thinking about here. Go in verse 10. My heart is pounding, my strength is gone, and my eyes have lost their brightness. Verse, verse 11. My friends and neighbors will not come near me because of my sores. Now hold on right now. <laughs> See, not only, not only has he done things wrong, but and the, all that that he's listed that he's done here that's caused all this, he turns around and says, wait a minute, just a second. Not only do I have all these physical problems and all these things I've been doing wrong that's causing me suffering. He said, in the meantime, he said, my friends and my neighbors. They won't even come near me. Why? Because I'm a source. So his friends are staying away from him. Okay. Have you lost? Uh, have you lost friends any, anywhere along the line? 
Have you lost any friends because of what you're doing with your life? That's because you're doing something bad, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, let's he, look at... Well, the, he said, even my family keeps away from me. Oh, yeah, this even my family keeps away. Joe went through a similar thing. Remember, Absolutely. His friends turned on him. His wife turned on him. Absolutely. Uh. So here again, remember, he's chronicling. He's chronicling. Mm -hmm. He's listing the things mm -hmm. that are going on in his life, have gone on his life, gone on there, that's causing him all this pain because of what he's done wrong in his life, okay? Verse 12. Those who want to kill me lay traps for me, and those who want to hurt me threaten to ruin me. See, they never stop plotting against me. Yeah, so here again, the friends, the family, everybody's leaving him. Now you got people plotting against him. Okay? Man. Now verse, verse 13. I am like the deaf and cannot hear, like the dumb and cannot speak. Deaf and dumb, okay. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. I am like those who do not answer because they cannot hear. Verse 15. But I trust in you, O Lord, and you, O Lord my God, will answer me. Now, and, under, and, amazing, mm -hmm. and after all of that, all of that, so what I want you to understand, no matter where you are in your life, no matter what you've done, you made a lament over all that back there. But David said, if you listen to what I, what I what's going on with me, and what's happening is we're going to see here, he's listing all this stuff mm -hmm. because once he gets this thing right, if there's ever an opportunity out here and there will be, to go back and do that again, he's going to say, oh, hold it now. Just say, mm -hmm. I remember what it was like back there. I don't want any of that, any more of that, okay? So he says, I'm going to trust you, Lord, and you, oh, Lord, will answer me, okay? Now let's go to the next page for just a moment. We've still got, we've still got a few more verses to go. Okay. Go ahead. Don't let my enemies gloat over my distress. Don't let them boast about my downfall. Okay. Um, don't. Yeah, well, yeah, hey, oh boy. You, you see old David over? He getting his. But see people boasting. They're gloating over this. They they're boasting about his downfall. Boy, he he Steve. He finally got his, didn't he? Okay. <laughs> about seventeen. I am about to fall. I am in constant pain. I confess my sins. They fill me with anxiety. Okay, see? Mm. Now, he's he's, na he's naming his sins. Lord, mm. here's what I did. You're right. I did mm. this. I did that. And he says, while I'm confessing all those, he says, they fill me with anxiety. Good grief. I can't believe I did all this or whatever, you know? Okay, verse 19. My enemies are healthy and strong. <laughs> there are many who hate me for no reason. Yeah, and please <laughs> understand, the, this is... These are things that were happening to David at this point in time. Mm -hmm. His enemies are, he looks out and says, man, I can't, I'm born again. He, look at this guy out here. Look how healthy he is. Uh -huh. uh, how going on. Uh -huh. So uh, those who pay back evil for good are against me because I try to do right. Now stop right here. You see, this, it, it, we've just, we've just studied this. I think yes, it might have been did, a, sure on Monday, on no, no, Monday no. night. Evil. Those who pay back evil for good. So what happened is we him. saw that David mm -hmm. starting out. He, what did he do? Well, he saved. He saved the king's hide. Uh, he saved his country. He killed Goliath. He he beat, defeated ten thousand Philistines. Yes, he did all this. And what happened is King Solomon and all his attendants. You know what they did? They became very envious of him because he was the most popular person in Israel at that point in time, okay? So these people, so what they're doing, they're, now they're out to get him, okay? Yeah. They're out to get him. So those, those who pay back evil for good are against me because I try to do right, okay? <laughs> Think of a human term I heard somebody say the other day, no good deed goes unpunished. Like oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> when, when that's what happens to him. Okay, the, uh, okay, verse 21, verse 21 and 22. Yeah. Yeah. Do not abandon me, O Lord. Do not stay away, my God. Help me now, O Lord, my Savior. So this is crying out to yes, him. and so this is David's this is David's prayer. It's his it's a psalm. It's a song. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, David's he's pleading to God and he's talking about what he did wrong. But in the in the end, he yeah. knows that God is going to be there. Okay, he finally got his attention. He Absolutely, what he's done, where he's at in life, but he knows where he needs to turn. So let's yeah. let's sort of review this mm -hmm. and and um, uh, summarize it. Okay, yeah. so this is a prayer of remembrance. David said, look, I know what the past is like, but I'll tell you what, I don't want any more of that. So every time we get an opportunity to go that direction, I'm going to say, oh, oh hey, no, I remember all that yeah. stuff back there, okay? So point uh, one. This psalm is full of grief and complaint from the beginning to the end. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. 
Absolutely. Grief. Okay, the next point. David's sins and his afflictions are the cause of his grief and the reason for the complaints. So is that, I mean, is that clear? Yeah. That? I mean, I mean, that, that. So when you re read down through that thing, that's, that's exactly what he was saying here, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, what about the next point? Well, he's now sick and in pain and reminded of his sins. Okay. His, his friends have deserted him and his enemies were persecuting him. This psalm shows us the depth of distress and the complications associated with sins. I mean, and I hope that's yeah. clear. Yeah. And got... 21 verses, and I'm yeah. telling you right now, yeah. it, he just, you see his distress. This is the consequences for the sins and the bad decisions. That's exactly yeah. right. Now, listen, listen, for example, in a sort of summary kind of a way, okay. listen, listen as David complains. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do is we're going to show what he's complaining about, mm -hmm. okay? There are five things. Yeah. Go ahead about God's displeasure and complains about his own sin, which provoked God against him. And, that, and we saw that one, in verses 1 through 5. Uh -huh. So it is, he's God's displeasure and complains about his own sin. What uh -huh. about point of do? Uh, about his bodily sickness. Okay, so he complained in verses 6 through 10 mm -hmm. about his bodily sickness, all created mm -hmm. as a result of his sin, okay? Mm -hmm. Point 3. About unkindness of his friends. You remember anything about that in verse mm -hmm. 11? Yes, exactly. Certainly. Go about on. the injuries uh, which his enemies did to him, pleading his good co conduct towards them, while at the same time confessing his sins against God. Sure. So here he is. He's talking about his injuries. What, what, look at what my enemies did to him, did to me. But while he's doing that, he's still he's still saying. But you know what? It's because here I'm out here doing all this good, and look what they're doing to me. Okay. And all the same time now he's getting ready to confess all these sins to God. And that's in verses one, that twelve through twenty. But in verse, in verse twenty, uh, twenty one and twenty two, he's going to conclude something. So what go? What well, happened? David there? concludes the psalm with earnest prayers to God for His gracious presence and help. Yes, see, God's going to be near. He's going to be there. He's going to oh, be there yeah. to sustain you when you get it right. right. See, He'd already confessed His sins. At that point, he, He'll never let you down. That's you're, that's you're. exactly right, Steve. Now here's the issue. That's that is this whole psalm that we saw here is dealing with suffering because of sin, mm -hmm. disciplinary suffering. Now, what we're going to do is in this next one, we're going to see suffering caused by wrong priorities. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what we're going to do we're going to take a look here now at at, at Ecclesiastes, the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. This is an amazing, an amazing passage of Scripture also. And we're going to study it a, a verse at a time, a line at a time. We're going to talk about it. And then we're going to, we're going to uh, sort of summarize this thing and see how it may apply to you and me. You out there on Facebook. You out here on YouTube. You out here on WebEx. Please give an ear to what we're saying. Because remember again, what, what conflict are we in? Angelic conflict. We're in the angelic conflict. Everyone. You can't get out. Mm -hmm. You're in it. <clears throat> you may be messing up. You may be on the wrong, standing on the wrong side of history. You're lined up with Satan rather than God. And even a born again Christian can be lined up with Satan as long as they're not being obedient to the will of God. Because remember, one saved, always, always saved. But you're going to miss your blessing in time and your reward in eternity, and you will suffer as I am. Self-induced misery. W. Warning discipline. I. Intensive discipline. And, and sin and, unto and, death. And that's right, and the sin and death. That's four levels of divine discipline in the life of a believer because in the angelic conflict, we're not being obedient to God. Now, let's stop and look at this. Ecclesiastes 12, verses 1 through 14. Suffering not because of discipline. Now we're suffering because of wrong priorities. Hello, wrong priorities. God has a plan for your life. You're a born-again Christian. God has a plan for your life. You're a part of a team. This is a team effort. And if you are, if you are a team member and you're along the sidelines, guess what? You're not being very effective. Mm -hmm. Or better still, you may be a team member and, and don't know the playbook. Mm -hmm. You just don't know the playbook. So let's take a look and see what this has to say. This, oh wait, I need to go get the other document now. Here it is right here. Now this is Ecclesiastes 12, 1 through 14, Steve. And this actually comes from the New International Version. 
And uh, this is the way it actually appears in the Bible. The, the, the verses look sort of like this for, for a part of the way down, okay? So what, what I want you to do is I want you to read one verse at a time, and let's talk about that. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. Can I stop and look at this? Remember your Creator. God the Father determined to create man on this planet for the purpose of resolving what? The angelic conflict. The angelic conflict. That's why you're here. Whoever you are, male, female, black, white, rich, poor, you're on this planet. You're here to, res to be a part of the resolution of the spiritual battle called the angelic conflict. And the way you're going to do that is actually to be obedient to the plan of God. Now, what, what we're going to find out is, is that it's possible to get distracted along the way, mm -hmm. and that's what, we're, that's what we're going to be talking about right here in all these, all these verses. So, remember your Creator. When are you going to, look here, when are you supposed to remember Him? In the days of your youth. So, in other words, as you're, you're growing, growing up, you need to be learning about this plan that God has for your life so that when you become an adult, you're going to be able to handle every circumstance of life. doesn't mean you're going to be good. You're able to handle the good, the bad, the right, the wrong, the indifferent. You're going to be able to handle them. But you're going to do that because you have to remember your creator starting back in the days of your youth. And that is what, so in the days of your youth before what? The days of trouble come, <laughs> and and years approach when you will say, "I find no pleasure in them." I find no pleasure in them. Okay, mean. for for the days of trouble come, mm -hmm. and the years approach when you will say, "See, I I find no I find no pleasure in these days of trouble." Right. No, mm -hmm. I I don't I don't like this trouble kind of stuff down here. Okay, so verse two says. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars grow dark and the clouds return after the rain. So here's the issue. As we're going down through here for a little while, you need all these are relating the idea that you need to be remembering your creator. Mm -hmm. Remember your creator before the days of trouble come and the years uh, approach when you'll say, I find no pleasure in them. You need, to, you need to remember your creator before the sun and the light of the moon and the stars go dark. And the clouds return at return after the rain. Okay, Let, and see, he's going to continue the same idea. Uh -huh. Go ahead. When the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men stoop, when the grinders cease because they are few, and those looking through the windows grow dim. Okay, so here again, this idea is th things are things are not good. You're so, wearing out like the grinders, but your teeth are wearing down, your eyes are getting hard to see. Is that what it refers well, to? Well, yes, and, when, and yes, and here again, you know, uh, the idea is if you don't remember him when all this thing happens, you don't have any hope, Steve. There is no hope. There is no way out. The only way out of of all this trouble is to pass through this trouble with God on your side, doing the right thing in the right way, finding peace at your content, no matter what the circumstances no matter what the circumstances are, you are handling these circumstances. And guess what you're doing? You're being a witness for him because you're using his plan for your life. Mm, testimony. Okay? Absolutely. His grace. That's exactly right. Now in verse, uh, let's see, in verse... Uh, Verse four. four. When the doors to the street are closed and the sound of grinding fades, when the people rise up at the sound of birds, but their songs grow faint. Now, see, he's a, he said this is part of the days of trouble. Mm -hmm. All of these are relating to some some form of problem in life. Nothing is right. But he's telling you here when all these kind of things happen. And they don't happen all at once. Mm -hmm. He got a little bit here, a little bit there, something different tomorrow, something down here. Look what happened today, but that kind of thing. Moving in a bad direction. But <laughs> when you do that, because you had remembered your creator in the days of your youth. Now, if you don't remember him in your youth, you better, you better step up today and find out what he's trying to tell you because all of this is going to be trouble, 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 trouble in life. And you have no hope, okay? So... When the doors, when the doors, uh, the, when the doors of the street are closed and the sound of the grinding phase, etc. How about verse five? When people are afraid of heights and of dangers in the streets, mm. 
when the almond tree blossoms and the grasshopper drags itself along and desire no longer is stirred, when the then the people who go to their uh, the then people go to their external now, uh, eternal home and mourners go to, about the streets. Okay, now let's look at let's look at that verse again, Steve. Mm -hmm. Read that entire verse one more time. And what's happening is he's explaining the kind of things that can Fear. happen in happen yeah. in time. Then what he says, when you understand all these things, all these circumstances that may come upon you, then the then people go to their eternal home and when they go to their eternal home, how are they going? They're going as mourners. And why are they going to why are they going to be mourners? They go back to the streets. Why are they mourning? It's because they don't have an answer. Right? Because back then, in the days of their youth, they didn't remember the Creator. They didn't, they didn't uh, after their youth, they didn't come along to learn what life is really all about. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, how about verse 6, sir? Remember him before the silver cord is severed and the golden bowl is broken, before the pitcher is shattered at the spring and the wheel broken at the well. It's more trouble, more trouble, yeah, more and, trouble. And the dust returned to the ground it came from, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Now, what happened in verse 8? Well, then this is all meaningless. Meaningless, says the teacher. Everything is meaningless. See, the Ecclesiastes, mm -hmm. the book of Ecclesiastes. So, so, so what happens is, all this, he said, seven verses. Look at all this stuff. He said it's meaningless. It's meaningless. Meaningless. Everything is meaningless. So what happens is you may be out here chasing after something today, mm -hmm. but if you don't understand why you're on this planet, and by the way, Steve, to be a born-again Christian, to be a... Um, uh, to be a mature believer, to be a believer that is obedient to God in every aspect of his life, her life, when you're living for Christ and people are seeing Christ in you, no matter what the circumstances are that come along, guess what? You are being a witness for him. And the truth of the matter is, somebody could come up to you and say, what is it about your life mm -hmm. in the midst of this mess that, uh, that allows you that to be... Not to be falling apart every time, okay? Yeah, how do you have peace through all this? You know? Absolutely. So while you're out there chasing, mm -hmm. David, while you're out there chasing person in the book of Ecclesiastes, whoever you happen to be, chasing, 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 guess what? It's meaningless. It's meaningless, says the teacher. Everything is meaningless. Now, that's everything in the world. Not everything about God's meaningless but everything about the world, everything you was read mm. in those first eight verses there. Now let's talk about the conclusion of this matter, Steve. What is the conclusion mm. in, in the next few verses? Yeah, not only was the teacher wise, but he also imparted knowledge to the people. He pondered and searched out and set in order many proverbs. Now stop right there. It, teacher was there. Not not mm -hmm. only the, now not only was the teacher wise, mm -hmm. and what you have to do is you've got to find yourself somebody mm -hmm. who is teaching you the word of God, mm -hmm. teaching you what life is all about. Mm -hmm. and basically, Steve, that's what you're about. That's what I'm about. Mm -hmm. We know many, many, many people that are pastors who are doing this same thing. Mark Goad out in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Uh, um, Brad West down in Arkadelphia, Ron and Ron Adam and, and Ro, uh, Al Rosenblum down in Birmingham, Steve Ellis down in Houston, Texas, uh, Mike Michael Eubanks in North Little Rock, um, uh, Mike Smith down in Brenham, Texas, uh, Andy Andy. This, there are there are many 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 pastors out here who are doing this, who are pre teaching the word of God. But normally in the normal local churches out here, the denominational setting, I'm sorry, folks, they're just not giving you what you need. Mm -hmm. It's a nice song. It's a great class. You know, it's the divorcees class. It's uh, we, we have great fellowship. Oh, you can't believe the nice food we get on Wednesday night or whatever. Hold it. No, what you need is truth. And that's what we're looking for. So not only was the teacher wise, but the teacher also imparted knowledge to the people. He pondered and searched out and set in order many proverbs. There's your pastor teacher teaching isagogically, categorically, exegetically. What about the teacher again, Steve? Well, the teacher searched to find just the right words, and what he wrote was upright and true. He See, rightly divided the word of God. Rightly dividing the word of truth. That's exactly right. Verse 11, The Steve. words of the wise are like goads. They're collected sayings like, Firmly embedded nails given by one shepherd. 
Absolutely. Being a pastor teacher. There you go. Be warned, my son, of anything in addition to them, <laughs> of making many books that, that there is no end, and much study where is the body. Okay, let's go back and see the last two yeah. again. It said, it's be like, warned, my son, mm -hmm. of anything in addition to them. In other words, what, what that means is if a teacher's giving you information, somebody else here may be adding to it, but you need to be warned, my son. You need to be warned, my daughter. That's that's the born again, born again believer. Be warned, mm -hmm. believer, of anything in addition to them. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the truth. We're not looking for something to be added oh, to the truth yeah. because when you add to the truth, you have a distortion of the truth and distortion of the truth. It, I, let, let me back up. That's too fast, Steve. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's the issue. If you add anything to the truth, you have a distortion of truth. And what's a distortion of truth? What's it evil. called? Evil. It's called evil. Evil is not just smoking dope, getting drunk, you know, fornicating, committing adultery. No, evil is a distortion of truth. And there is a principle of evil and there is a practice of evil. So when you understand in such a way that what you have in your soul is distortion, guess what? Mm. You, go, you go out and practice it. It's evil practice, and guess what? God is going to is going to discipline mm -hmm. you because you're outside of His will for your life. I didn't know this, but I say this. It says, "Of many books, there is no end. Much study wearies the body. The libraries, the bookstores are full. Everybody their own answer. Self help books, and none of them." Have anything to do with living the Christian of life? Of many books, Leap. there is no oh, end. So you, is, look at the library. Yeah, Whoop, I, all those I, I books. Found where it's at, and they have some kind of philosophy of life. That's but you only you only need one that's book. Right, that's right. And it's the Bible, but yeah, the Word of God. I didn't even know that was in the Bible. That's true. That's really true. Okay, so here we go now in verse in verse thirteen. Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Okay, now that all now uh -huh. that you heard it all, uh -huh. uh, we're going to have to have a conclusion here. And what is the conclusion? Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the duty of all mankind. Uh oh. Amen. Here it is. <laughs> It, hold to see fear for God and keep his word. See, and yeah. the reason for this is, is that the reason we are here on this planet mm -hmm. is to resolve a spiritual battle called the angelic conflict. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter is, is it's amazing how many people on this planet mm -hmm. don't know, know that. that. No. They have not been taught. Yeah. And this is what I mean by going to a church here, going to a church that, well, I'm just going to go, I want to see it. We just go someplace, you know, because the music's so good or, you know, the past pastor he's got a good personality and and he's not too he not too uppity you know and he's just oh and i just they got a sunday school class and uh, oh hold it just a second you know uh, i just recall i'm i recall the waitress who said told me that she's going to a big church i said why are you going there it's just because we have so much fun mm, so much fun <laughs> okay okay so not about having fun no so verse 14 for God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it's good or whether it's evil. Now watch this. God's going to bring every Everything. deed into judgment. I don't care what you're doing out here. Good or bad. You may, and we better make sure that if you're doing good, mm -hmm. you better make sure it is divine not good not and human. not human good. Mm -hmm. Because when you get to the Bema Seat and you see it all go up in smoke, you say, oh, you're, that's wow, when good. you're going to suffer a loss. Mm -hmm suffering you know, loss. Oh, I was doing human good instead of divine good all that time. But see, I was, but yet, you know, I don't understand this, Steve. Somebody would, benefited from it. It had to be good. Yeah. That's exactly right. Look at all the good that came from it. Yeah, they, they benefited, they benefit, yeah. but you get nothing for yeah. it because you're following the wrong plan. Mm -hmm. So for God will bring every deed into judgment. Now, hold it just a second. For God will bring what? Every, every deed. deed. Every Not deed. just a few of them. Mm -hmm. Not most of them. Mm -hmm. God is going to bring every deed into judgment. So he's and throughout your entire saved life, you have this opportunity, that opportunity, this opportunity, that opportunity, this opportunity, and he has a reward waiting you, waiting for you in heaven for doing the right thing in the right way. But the truth of the matter is, every deed that you do, good, bad, right, wrong, indifferent, human good, divine good, whatever you do, it's going to come under judgment at the beam of seat of Christ. You're not going to hell. Mm -hmm. If you lose it all, you're not going to hell. You're just going to go through all, all eternity mm -hmm. 
with no reward. It sounds to me like evaluation is a good word also along with judgment. It's, well, know, that's exactly what it is. Evaluating your works, good or he's, bad. He's going to evaluate Divine your or life. Human good, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so verse 14 again. For God will bring every deed unto judgment, including the hidden things. You won't hide nothing from him. No. Whether it's good or evil, it's all going to be judged. Okay, so remember re, so remember what we're doing here. Let's go back to, let's go back to the previous page for just a moment mm -hmm. and see what we're talking about here. We're talking about well, I need to go back one more mm -hmm. just to make it's to well, that's that's, that's, that's a different. So no, what we're, different, yeah. we're talking about um uh the the whole the subject the subject here is Go back one one page here, right there, right there. Okay, so what we're dealing what we're dealing with is suffering caused by wrong priorities. Mm -hmm. See, that's the issue. So what we want to ask ourselves right now is is all that you're doing, is everything that you're doing, is it related to a right priority? So the question is, do you have your priorities right or not? So let's take a look here at something that I'm going to throw in here mm -hmm. because all of this is dealing with whether or not you have a right priority. Let me read this. Mm -hmm. So I have to ask a question. Yeah. Are you a hedgehog or are you a fox? <laughs> now you might say, well, wait a minute. I don't understand what's going on here, but uh, I'm asking you, are you a hedgehog or are you a fox? And in this illustration... There's no other, there's, that's all you get. You're either a hedgehog or you're a fox. So let's find out what this hedgehog and this fox are all about. So in his famous essay, and that was the title of it, The Hedgehog and the Fox, Isaiah Berlin divided the world into hedgehogs and foxes. <laughs> so here's this guy, Berlin, and he says, okay, here's all the people of the world, and let's divide them. These are hedgehogs. And these are foxes. Now, what he's going to do is he's going to describe he's going to describe this based upon an ancient Greek parable. The fox knows many things, but the hedgehog knows one big thing. Now, now stop listening. Mm. The hedgehog knows one big thing, but the fox knows. Ooh, look at all this! Look at all this that this Ooh, fox knows. Things. The fox is a Cunning creature, able to devise a myriad of complex strategies for sneak attacks upon the hedgehog. So the fox is looking to get the hedgehog, and this hedgehog knows only one big thing. But the strategies of this fox, they're multitudinous. He's always trying to figure out, how can I get that hedgehog? Day in and day out. The fox circles around the hedgehog's den, waiting for the perfect moments to pounce. Fast, sleek, beautiful, fleet of foot, and crafty. The fox looks like the sure winner because he's got so many strategies and that hedgehog just got this one big thing. Well, the hedgehog, on the other hand, is a doughtier creature looking like a genetic mix-up between a porcupine and a small armadillo. <laughs> What's he do? Waddles along. He waddles yeah. along, going about his simple day, searching for lunch and taking care of his home. Now the fox. The fox is going to wait in cunning silence at the juncture in the trail. The hedgehog, minding his own business, wanders right into the path of the fox. Ha-ha! I got you now, thinks the fox. He leaps out, bounding across the ground, lightning fast. Lightning fast. The little hedgehog, oh, the hedgehog is sensing danger. So what does he do? He looks up and thinks, here we go again. Will he ever learn? The hedgehog is looking at the fox and saying, is that fox ever going to learn? So rolling up into a perfect little ball, the hedgehog becomes a sphere of sharp spikes pointing outward in all directions. The fox bounding toward his prey sees the hedgehog defense 
and calls off the attack. Mm -hmm. Well, the fox bounding toward his prey sees the hedgehog again. He calls off the attack and retreating back to the forest, the fox begins again to calculate a new line of attack. Each day, some version of this battle between the hedgehog and the fox takes place, and despite the greater cunning of the fox, the hedgehog always wins. Mm -hmm. Now, what's happening here? Why? Did, so why did he divide? Why did Berlin, why did he divide the world into hedgehogs and foxes? Mm -hmm. Well, here's the reason. You see, foxes pursue many ends at the same time and see the world in all of its complexity. So here you are as a born-again Christian. Here you are as a human being. You're looking out and saying, oh, boy, this, this world is really complex. Got this going on, this going on. But I'll tell you what, I got it all figured out. Mm -hmm. I got it all figured out. Forget this God thing. Okay? I, think that I got it all figured out. So what happens is, while it, the world has all these complexities, they are scattered and diffused moving on many levels that's the that's the fox pursuing many ends they're scattered they're diffused moving on many levels never integrating their thinking into one overall concept or unifying vision all he knows is go off well that didn't work oh, well, we that didn't work hey how about this one over here that didn't work over here oh that didn't work no so what the hedgehog do? he just brought it all up here and brought it together so hedgehogs on the other hand Simplify a complex world into a single organizing idea. A basic principle or concept that unifies and guides everything. How about a Jesus thing, okay? It doesn't matter how complex the world. A hedgehog reduces all challenges and dilemmas to simple, almost simplistic hedgehog ideas. So the question is this today. Which are you? Are you a hedgehog? Or a fox. So you're out here seeing you see how complex life is. So you go off and you start over that right there. That didn't work. Go over here, that didn't work. Go there, that didn't work. Go that over here, this didn't work. And you try again and again and again and again. And hey, Mr. Fox, hey, Mr. Fox, you're out there doing all this stuff. And what is it's meaningless, it's meaningless, it's meaningless, it doesn't work, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It, well, tell you what, Steve, we got people on, on Facebook with us. We're going to have people on YouTube with us. We've got people on WebEx. And guess what? Who knows? Many of them may have not yet gotten it. Some of them may not have gotten it. And what are they doing? They're going to try the next thing. Mm -hmm. No, I got this plan over here. Trying I think this works. I think it's a work over here. Listen, mm -hmm. why don't you take Jesus? Why don't you take his life? If you've never been born again, why don't you take the salvation that he's offering? Free. It's, it's there. Just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, say, well, I'm already born again. I got that. <laughs> Hold it, Mr. Fox. You're born again, Mr. Fox. You're going over there. You're going over there. Going back here. Going over there. But n is any of it working, Steve? No, it's not working, is it? So the smart hedgehog, born again hedgehog, he just wraps it all up. He's not going out there. He's not going out there. Not going out. There. He's just going to take that one thing. Take Jesus and the Word of God, proven, and and just be obedient, and go through life victorious. So here you are. Which are you, hedgehog or a fox? Today, as we talk about priorities, see, this this guy didn't have the right priority. See, the, fo the fox is going out there, priority out there, priority that. No, you need a priority, and the priority needs to be right. So today, as we talk about priorities, think with me for a moment about the multitude of choices you have before you each day concerning how you're going to spend your life. A multitude of opportunities out there, circumstances you're going to face. Life is a journey, a trip down the freeway of life. And last week, I told you that your purpose in life is to glorify God through the delight you take in him, to glorify him. Your purpose in life is to glorify God by enjoying him. But as you travel on, Steve, as we travel on, you are confronted with a multitude of choices. Exits, if you will, exit over here, exit over there, exit over there, vying for your time and your attention. And if you're not careful, you will take the wrong one, the wrong turn of the road, and end up somewhere you never 
intended to be. Mm -hmm. Here's the issue. We read 14 verses about Solomon in Ecclesiastes. Read this, Steve. Solomon is a classic example of the fox. Hold it right there. <laughs> He's a classic example of fox. Go ahead. Solomon was a gifted man with many talents and interests. Okay. Chapter 1 through 13, 13 tells us that he had a desire to understand the complexities of our world. Now watch this. Chapter yes. 1, verse 13. We just, we're just reading, going to mm -hmm. read, read a large passage of Scripture, but now we're going to go back to verse Go back to verse uh, verse one, uh, 13 in chapter 1, and we're going to see what that verse tells us. Mm -hmm. So look here. Here mm -hmm. it is, verse 113. <laughs> yes. I applied my mind to study and to explore my, my wisdom, all that is done under the heavens. What a heavy burden God has laid on all mankind. So here, so you got this, you got this thing out here in life. He said, well, I'm going to get out here. I'm going to find wisdom. Now, what we're going to find out, yeah, he's going to find wisdom all right. He's going over here, going over there. going. So let's take a look then. It's, he told you, he said, I applied my mind, yeah, I did, to study and explore by wisdom all that is done under the heavens. Do you understand this is all the circumstance of life? Why did that happen? Why did that happen? Why did this happen over here? Why is that happening over there? He's going to explore to find out why all that's going on. He said, boy, but you can't believe it. What a heavy burden that is on mankind to try to figure all this out, okay? <laughs> so in his search, <clears throat> in his search for satisfaction, chapter 2, verse 1, tells us that he tried all sorts of pleasures and entertainment. So so here he is, he's trying to find wisdom, okay? Searching he got all these things going on out there, and he's out there searching for all this. And, all and now things. what we're going to do is we're going to find in this, mm -hmm. he tried all sorts of pleasures and mm -hmm. entertainments. Verse chap chapter 2, verse mm -hmm. 1 says... He said, I said to myself, well, come now, I will test you with pleasure to find out what is good. But that also proved to be meaningless. So, so here he is. He's going to test to find out. Talks to himself. Yeah, I'm going to try it all. I'm going to absolutely pursue but he said, pleasure. But he said, look, he said, when I get done, he said, it was all worthless. Uh -huh. well, how about Ecclesiastes 2, 3? He, uh, that, that verse says he tried wine. He tried wine. What did he yeah. try in verse 4? Yeah. He talks about his building campaigns. He built houses and vineyards and gardens and orchards and lakes and irrigation systems. He did things. Yes, he's doing it. See, he's seeking wisdom. He's doing all this kind of stuff. You go out of here, out of here, out there. Now, how about Ecclesiastes 2 7? It tells of his vast acquisitions of slaves, of cattle and gold and silver and various entertainers. Now, do you, do you see, go back up here? He says in verse 1, I'm going to test Every you with pleasure and find out what's good. So he tried wine, he tried building all kinds of things. He comes mm -hmm. down here and he's making vast ac uh, acquisitions. He's bring, getting this, he's getting that, getting something oh, else. Man. But remember, I'll go back up here, he's it proved all meaningless. to be meaningless. Uh -huh. So he tried collecting things. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Tried collecting things. Perhaps the most telling verse is ch uh, chapter 2, verse 10, where he said... Okay, now watch this. Mm -hmm. So it, it, we get that, did all that up there. Mm -hmm. Now I get down to verse 10... And he says, look, but, but you know, all that up there? He said, but look here, the most telling verse is right here. And what does it say? Whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor. Mm. And this was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought and all the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, it was all vanity <laughs> and vexation of spirit. And there was no profit under the sun. Can you imagine after all, all this? All wasted, yeah. So what happens when you no. tip it? And the reason, for, the reason that it's all wasted, Steve. And I mean, those are wonderful things that he's done. Oh, yeah, that's also wonderful. But the truth of the matter is, in this life and what life is all yeah. about, those things yeah. are worthless. So you may go out here and, and start over here. You may go off over here, go off oh, over here, yeah. do all these oh, things. But what you're going to find out is when you get oh, done, if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, oh, if man. you don't have the oh, Word of God and oh, applying man. the Word of God to it's every vanity. circumstance of life in this angelic conflict, mm. when you, it's going to be meaningless here. It's going to be misery here. And when you get to the beam of seat, you lose it all except your salvation. Mm. Okay? And now, so wow. here's a man, here's a man Solomon, uh -huh. who early in his journey took his eyes off the purpose and instead took a wrong exit. Mm -hmm. Solomon enjoyed more than you, than you and I will ever know in this life. Mm -hmm. You just saw it up there. Mm -hmm. 
And while most of the world is chasing after it, see, most of the world is doing that very oh, yeah. thing, chasing after all that. Mm -hmm. But they're doing it with blind devotion. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're devoted, all right, but it, they're blind. They don't see that mm -hmm. when you get done, this is all worthless. So Solomon got to the end of it all. When he got all through all that stuff, he said it didn't satisfy me. Mm -hmm. It did not satisfy. It wasn't worth the time. And yet he'd wasted all that time. It wasn't worth the effort, and yet he wasted all that effort. It wasn't worth what it cost him. He said, I didn't, it didn't gain me one thing. So we're talking about why, you're, why we suffer. We suffer for disciplinary measures, and we suffer because of wrong priorities in life. Mm. Read that last, ver that last statement there, Steve. Solomon didn't waste his life because he didn't know his purpose. He wasted his life because he took a wrong exit, got sidetracked, and spent his life pursuing all the wrong priorities. Now look at that again. See, and that that first mm. part of that verse, uh, that sentence. When you read it, if you don't stop and think about it, you say, "Well, you just, you just heard what was read." But what happened? We've we've been talking here. Solomon wasted his life. He wasted his life. He wasted his life. He wasted his life. He did all this, all these wonderful things up there that he had done. He got down to the end and says, man, it, it was all vanity. It wasn't worth a thing. So what we need to understand about Solomon, Solomon didn't waste his life because he didn't know his purpose. Oh, he knew his purpose. But the truth of the matter is he, he wasted his life be because he took a wrong exit. We can tell you out here on Facebook and WebEx and, and uh, YouTube, we can tell you tonight that the issue in your life is Jesus Christ, Christ to be your Lord and Savior and to be obedient to his plan for your life, fulfilling his plan in the sphere of the Spirit, functioning for your new man or your new woman, and applying the truth of God's word to your circumstance of life, to be a witness for him, to glorify him. But the truth of the matter is, while you know that, here you are out there chasing that dream, you're out there chasing that dream, you're out there chasing that dream, and the truth of the matter is, if God the Holy Spirit is not leading you in that direction, you are going in the wrong direction, and now you know why you're suffering in life. Wrong priorities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one more time, that last sentence there, Steve. Well, Solomon didn't waste his life because he didn't know his purpose. That's he right. wasted his life because he took a wrong exit. He got sidetracked and spent his life, spent his life pursuing wrong priorities. See? Time goes fast. That's he's, right. He spent it in the wrong way. And yeah, wrong The born-again Christian's priority is doctrine number one in your mm -hmm. life. And doctrine tells you how to live mm. the Christian way of life. Mm. Steve, what we've done tonight is taken a look at a couple of things here. And we'll come back next week and pick up with the next increment. And uh, we may fin finish it next week. But if not, we'll, we'll, it'll take us one more uh, one more, one more week. Two, maybe two weeks, okay? Then we'll go mm. off in another direction. <laughs> but there's much. Listen, uh, 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 attending this idea. We're mm. going to finish suffering. But attending this idea... There, there's there's so many truths here mm -hmm. that I just pray I pray that people continue to stay with us to to and listen if you've got questions hey text me email me mm -hmm. uh, call me on the phone um, friend me on Facebook uh, go out to go out to YouTube and uh, and uh, subscribe well, to my channel mm -hmm. I've got listen I've got doctrines 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 available to you if you want. Um, yeah, because a lesson like this can sure stimulate a lot of thought and questions. Yeah, yes. We're here to help. That's that's exactly right. We're here to help. So, Steve, go ahead and pray for us. Oh, Father, I don't know how one mm -hmm. Bible study can be better than the next, mm -hmm. and each and every time it is. But, Father, the well, the truth of this is so, so real. And, Father, though we may have wasted much of our life up mm -hmm. to now, the fact is we're still breathing. There's still time left for your plan yes. for our life. And we should be... If we just think we live our life and squander around, we yeah. die in 50 years from now or 10 years mm -hmm. or a year from now, nobody even knows. Yes. It makes no difference. Yes. It's wrong. We need to be actively pursuing your will for our life. Yes. Our own worst enemy, our own worst enemy when we avoid that because it ends up just like Solomon. Yes. Vanity of vanities. A oh, life man. will be at the beam of seat with no rewards for returning, no yes. blessing in times, and we get our own way. So, Father, your plan is perfect. Yes. We just, it's here, it's yes. real, we just need to live it. And Dr. Jim makes it so clear. 
And I thank him for that. I thank you for your truths. And thank you for sending Jesus Christ to die on the cross for us and to give us eternal life and yes. salvation. The most awesome gift in the whole universe. In his name we pray. Jesus, blessed name. Amen. Steve, let me ask you to stand up. I'm going because uh, I need to reach up there to oh, Facebook, sure, sure. okay? Sure, and yeah, I want to yeah. I want to go up to Facebook and see who's online with us. Yeah, Please yeah. stay on be t uh, before oh, yeah. before I go off. And I'll come back here to to um, to YouTube and um, and to, uh, to WebEx. I just want to call out and see who's online with us here in uh, on Facebook. Let's see. Um, okay, uh, thank uh, Christy Booth. God bless you, Christy. Thanks so much for being with me tonight. Uh, love you in the Lord, girl. Uh, Karen Torrance is from here from BB, Arkansas. Rick Blackwood from Atlanta, Texas. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, hell yes. Christy says, I love your taekwondo belts hung up behind you. Thank you, Christy. Jamie Baker's online with us tonight. Uh, yeah, Red Tide, you're right, Christy, down there in Florida. Mary Jo Lamuco from Davao City, Mindanao. Herbert, R Herbert Richard Morell. Rick Morell from um, Mindanao in Davao City. Uh, let's see. Eddie Gallo is on with us from uh, Las Vegas. Uh, my son Brian from here in town, my daughter Donna Hayden from here in town, uh, Hayden Bertel, my grandson from up in Conway, thank you Hayden for being with me tonight, uh, let's see, Martha Hasley, thank you Martha, I believe she's from Arkadelphia, Arkansas, Stephen Bond from Fayetteville, Arkansas, Jelaine uh, Villegas, Pedras actually, thank you Jelaine for being with us tonight, Robert Rice is actually with us from Cheyenne, Wyoming, my children's from uh, North Little Rock, Arkansas, Karen Torrance from BB. Uh, Patricia Bem, thank you, Patricia, for being with me. My friend, uh, Ralph Braun, Pastor Ralph Braun, God bless you. Thanks so much for being with me tonight, Ralph. Justin Boyd, thank you, Justin, from uh, from Fort Smith, Arkansas. Justin, I'm looking forward to meeting you sometime when you're in town. God bless you, my friend. Amalito Apostle Indong is with us tonight. Thank you, uh, um, Amalito. Let me see. And that's all on Facebook. God bless you. I'm going to close this out. Be back on Sunday morning. And let me come back down here for just a moment and see who's on with us from um, on WebEx. Uh, Bob and Mobile Bonds from Fayetteville. My daughter, Leanne. Brian, son, my son, Brian Bertell. Henry and Kat Kennedy from New Chesney, Texas. My wife, Janet, from the house. And Kim Williams from Little Rock and the Varnell family from Antioch, Arkansas. God bless all of you and good night.